So welcome to your crypto class. Today we're going to go over the news, the overall market. You're going to look at hot movers in the basket. We'll look at the crypto screener review indicators, and most importantly, questions and answers. So today on the news, we have contradictory Vitalik Buterin says he wants a more Bitcoin-like Ethereum by Ruholaman Hack. Shana's on CryptoNews.com. Nearly seven years ago, Buterin created Ethereum as a way to leverage the blockchain technology for all sorts of use cases, contrary to Bitcoin, which was meant to utilize the technology to act as a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash. However, throughout the years, he has seemingly developed an appreciation for Bitcoin's simplicity and its quest to be simply a decentralized, reliable currency. And now, after the recent Twitter thread on contradictions, some crypto industry observers are wondering whether Buterin was really joking when he published a blog post in defense of Bitcoin maximalism on April the 1st. In the article, he was phrasing um, the Bitcoin's community's commitment to caution and their willingness to defend the flagship cryptocurrency even with ferocity. On the other hand, in the same article, Buterin noted that Ethereum's feature richness makes it vulnerable to risks. Eventually, one complex feature could threaten to undermine the decentralization of Ethereum and make it vulnerable to hostile attack, he argued. Systematic effects are real, Buterin wrote, and it's just not possible for a currency to enable an ecosystem of highly complex and risky decentralized applications without that complexity biting it back somehow. Okay, so the next part of the news is Ethereum price analysis. Ethereum bounces from $2,000, swift push higher next by Lappin on Cryptopolitan.com. The market has seen bullish movement return over the last 24 hours. The leaders, Bitcoin and Ethereum, gained 3.202 and 4.8% respectively. Meanwhile, Sol, AVAX, and Cardano, ADA, among others, have gained over 7%. Ethereum USD traded in a range of $1,988 to $2,098, indicating mild volatility over the last 24 hours. Trading volume has declined by 6.87%, totaling $18.66 billion, while the total market cap trades around $253 billion, resulting in market dominance of a 19.29%. On the four-hour chart, we can see the Ethereum price rapidly moving towards the 2,200 resistance as another higher low was set late yesterday and retracement still continues. Ethereum price analysis is bullish today as the market has resumed its advance this morning after $2,000 mark offered a strong support. Therefore, Ethereum slash USD is ready to push even higher and move to the $2,000 resistance over the next 24 hours. However, guys, a little bit more down in the article, it said that there could be a retracement back to 1700 at the end of May. So these are volatile markets. So please um, keep your safe safety vests on, on this in these waters. The third part of the news, investors remove $7 billion from Tether within 48 hours, fearing USDD may lose its peg. Don't worry, this is a positive at the end of this, I promise. So this was by uperiodtoday.com. As reported by CNBC, the supply of Tether, USTD, stablecoin issued by Tether has dropped from $83 billion to a little less than $76 billion since last week. While investors fear that they may lose their money, just like the UST, the Tether CTO assures that the stablecoin is fully backed. They have the liquidity to redeem any amount of Tether, Paulo Ardonio tweeted, last week when USTD dropped below $1 for a short time, some investors hastily withdrew $7 billion from Tether as questions again arose as to whether the most popular stablecoin is 100% backed. The price fell below, fell to $0.95 cents after the collapse of UST 
NFT, algorithmic stable coin powered by TerraChain, which has been halted for a while now. Tether, as it turned out after a settlement with the New York Attorney General, is backed not only with USD in banks, but short-term commercial papers have also been used as collateral for the stablecoin. Now that UST has lost its peg and 7 billion have been redeemed from Tether, fears that USDT may not be fully backed are rising once again. So just make sure you guys understand the difference between UST and USDT. Whether Tether last disclosed what the stablecoin is backed with, it turned out that it was only 4.2 billion in cash. The rest was undefined treasury bills at 34.5 billion and commercial paper 24.2 billion. After several calls for a complete audit of US DT reserves in 2021, Tether promised CNBC to produce. And I'm so sorry, that was the end of that article. It was it ended up that Tether was able to produce their, their papers and confirm that they are solid. All right, so you guys can go back to that article and finish reading it. All right, so now we're going to go over the overall market, Bitcoin and Ethereum market caps. So I love coinmarketcaps.com. And on the top of it, I just want to make sure that you see this arrow. You can always see what the market cap is for that day or that moment when you jump on. So currently it's one trillion, $1.3 trillion is how much is in overall crypto land. So you can see the arrow on the right hand side, you can see the grid where it says 1.3 on the left, on the very right, you'll see where it is at. Now I've added some colorful lines, well some different thickness of lines so you guys can see the movement in the last seven days. This, this is a seven day chart. You can see in the beginning of last week we were at 1.4 trillion went down right above 1.1 trillion and then it came right back up in the middle of the week and then uh, it dipped down to 1.2 almost in the, in the last few days and went back up so that's the motion in the crypto ocean right now for you i love that perspective now the next section, I love this. This is the one week performance market cap block size. And this is on coin360.com. This is for my visual learners. I love this. You can see the arrow I put towards the performance seven days because when you're on the site, you can drop that box and you can go to a month, one hour, one day, whichever way you like to look at the market. And then the block size shows that you can look at market cap dominant block size but you can also change it to volume so currently this one is showing market cap and what that means is that where you see bitcoin and the bottom of that bitcoin it shows that the dominance of bitcoin in the market is 43.25 percent so that means of all the money in crypto land 43.25 percent is invested invested in Bitcoin. Now in the article we just read about Ethereum, it stated that about 19% is invested in Ethereum. So on this chart, what you're looking at are these blocks are representing that percentage. So we don't know from looking at this chart, like how much SOL, S-O-L, the one below Ethereum to the left, we don't know like how much percentage of the market is invested in SOL, but you could tell by the block size that it's a larger amount than AVAX, right, or near. So then the other thing I want to bring your attention to is the color coding on this. So the dark red means the price to buy went down three steps. And AVAX is a dark red color. You can see that it went down 18% in the last seven days. The medium red is the price to buy went down two steps. So I pointed the arrow to Ethereum, and that's down 7.86% in the last uh seven days and then the light red means the price went down one step and you can see bitcoin went down 0.2 percent so if you're like me you like to buy things on super sale you're going to want to zone in on those red dark dark red zone like the avex and near the vtc icp phil you want to just keep watching those dark reds because those are ones that are going to be like 
really low. Remember, you make money when you buy it, not when you sell it. So if you buy it super low enough, if you make certain that you hit a floor, and that's the thing, like you want to know when to buy and you want to know when to sell. And so um, I like to buy in the dark red zone, but after it's like on its way up. And Joe is here, the creator of the overlays that we're all using right now. And so he's going to explain maybe the floors and the ceilings and how to identify when you've hit a floor and when you've hit a ceiling. That'd be great to talk about today. So now we have the dark green zone and that means the price to buy went up three steps. So for this example, I picked MKR and you could see MKR is on the upper right hand corner lower. It's a small one, it's right above USDT. The medium green, the price to buy went up two steps. So these are when you wanna look at taking profit when you see these, these medium, to dark greens. So FTT is an example of the medium green, and it's like one step up from MKR on the upper right hand corner of the chart. The light green is the price to buy went up one step. So DOT, it's right there to the right of this little wording on the chart, that went up one step. So I hope that helps. It's a really good place to go if you just are a visual learner and you like to see colors and shapes and it'll kind of get you to zone in before you want to go into the charts. All right, now just to be positive today, I did go into the gainers and losers section and I pulled up 200 top gainers. So uh, these went up like in the last, and this is a seven day chart. So MKR went up 50% in the last seven days. So if anybody's new to crypto, this is very exciting time if you're just putting new money in right when you but you with the thing you've got to identify the floors so maker must have had a really good drop and then you know people just bought back in right so 50 percent moving up ape went up seven percent mana went up ten percent and um you guys can see other ones bnx went up 48 percent so uh it's a zero sum loss. I think that's what Joe says. I can't wait to get him on the line here. So I'll just go through these slides and we'll get Joe in and he'll explain some stuff to you today. All right. So we have Bitcoin USD one week performance chart, and this is using the radar indicator. So if you're a Moonstream customer, then you have the radar. It's part of the package. And so what it's showing you on this Bitcoin chart, for, first of all, it turns four charts into one. And what I mean by that is you can look at four different time frames right now. So we're on a one week chart and that's what the bars or the candlesticks are showing you on the chart. But on the lower right hand side, the radar is telling us what's going on on a four hour basis, a one day, a one week and a one month basis. So for four hours on an average, it's going down. But on a one day average, it's going up. But on a one week average, it's been going down and a one month average, it's been going down. So what that information leads for me to say is just wait. You know, unless you're intraday trading, unless you're you're getting in and you're getting out because in the one day moment, you know, things are moving upward, but not on a consistent basis enough to to trigger that one week to go green. So. Um, Depending on your trades and, and your strategies, you know, you'll develop your own ones and time frames that you're comfortable with and that you're capable of maintaining. But these are really helpful to see an eagle's eye, an eagle eye, eagle's eye view of what's going on with whatever coin you're looking at or asset, because it's important to make certain how if you're buying or selling the market and we're i'm american so i can't really short the market in crypto um but if if i'm buying the market i want to buy when it's on the floor but when it's moving in the upward direction all right we'll get into the charts in a minute and to into the live the charts right now but i did take these this morning so they are accurate as of today of right now so Bitcoin USD, this is the early reversal indicator chart, and you can see on um, the upper area, the early reversal 
arrow is showing downward, the red came in. So it looks like on a one week basis, we haven't flipped yet. Um, on the trend line, it's, the, it's blank, okay? It's those, those candlesticks are clear and the line, the red line is showing it's still going down. PSI, trend strength directional indicator. And I just threw in that word directional indicator because I want to let you know that it, it really is showing it's going in a downward direction. There is no right or there's no wrong in trading, okay? Someone's making money no matter if it's going up or down. <laughs> it's just moving it, basically. So at this point, the 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 market is going downward. Bitcoin is becoming a lesser price right now to purchase. The signal line is showing that it's still going down as of now. And the volatility index is at, um, I'm pointing at that little red line and that's in my favorite section. So meaning like it's getting ready for me to want to buy it, but not yet because I need to wait for other indicators to say, okay, it's time to go. But it's at a 12.5. That number is significant because it's below the, the 20 line. So it means that it's oversold. So it's getting really low and this is good. This is good for if you're in the buying market and you're waiting, you're waiting right now. So now, or and this cannot be financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, okay? I'm just going to do this for educational purposes to understand the technology that we have. All right, so Ethereum. This is the Ethereum one week chart with the radar indicator. And currently it says that Ethereum's at $2,050. And you can see on the radar for the four hours, it's going down, the four hour average charts. The one day average is moving up very similar to Bitcoin. It's actually the same. The one week is down and the one month is down. And so now let's get into the, these are the Ethereum USD one week chart with the crypto mastery indicators. And it looks the same as Bitcoin. So you've got the early reversal saying that it's going to continue to go down. The trend is continuing to go down. The TSI is still facing the downward direction. The signal line is down and the volatility index is not as low as Bitcoin. It's at 16.94, but it's still in the oversold zone. So it's, again, it's really exciting if you're new to the industry because, or, or the whole marketplace, because this looks like we could be hitting some floors, but we're not there yet, okay? It's, it's still moving. All right, so now let's talk about the basket. The basket that we've been, we have currently is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So let's look at some hot movers in the basket. Okay, so on a one week basis, and that's kind of how I have this organized, most of them are all down, okay? And, but you can see the percentage change on the right hand side. So on an intraday, so on a one day basis, but less than that, you have things that are moving up. So I wanted to draw your attention to that column on the left hand side where it says percentage change. So KNC is up 16%, KSM is up 13%. This is on a momentarily basis. So it, things are moving um, on a short, short, short term basis, uh, but on a one week average, it's not flipped the switch as momentum moving upward yet. But let's just talk about your watch list and how you can organize them. So you can organize your watch list by the change percentage, the amount of change in the price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And then these coins are up for the day, but I always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for your next, for my next low buy. So there's multiple different directions you want to look at these markets to be prepared for when you're buying and selling and you'll have multiple assets going at the same time or investments. So you're going to want to almost seesaw. You're going to look on both sides on a, on a consistent basis. It's going to be fun, I promise. So the crypto screener review, I wanted to show you this technology that's in TradingView 
And it's a technology that everybody that has even a free account with TradingView has access to it. So I don't make my trades using this, but you can look at it to get a deep diver, deep diving analysis on, on um, simple moving averages. So what it is, is when you're creating a watch list, you can color code the watch list, the little flags to the left-hand side. And if you look at the, sec the left-hand side of the screen, it says ticker 13 matches. And the this is just made for um, demonstration purposes only. It's, it's not reflecting the market today, okay? So don't look at these prices. So you would just change that flag color on the left-hand side to to match the color of what you've coded each of your coins or tokens on the right hand side. And then you can change the time frame of what you want this crypto screener to bring up. So this particular one is on a one week basis. So now I'm just gonna explain what the heading area of the crypto screener is. You can sort by moving average rating. You can sort by last price or by simple moving average, and that stands for 20 days, when it says SMA 20, 50 days, or 200 days. And then I want to take your attention to the little mini S and the B, it means a sell or a buy, All right? That's what that means. Okay, so now we're gonna review the crypto period, I'm sorry, mastery.cryptobrigade.com indicators now. So I just want to give you um, a little heads up. That's where you would go if you are just a Moonstream member and you have only the radar and you want to just subscribe to get all the radars. So there, there is this link that is available and it's it's up and running now, mastery.cryptobrigade.com. And that way you could subscribe to the indicators. So you can you can join in on the fun all right so now here are those indicators when you have them this is what it's going to look like inside of your trading view account now i've put little stars next to mine so that they come up in my favorite zone but we have volatility index for oversold conditions we have the early reversal indicator dynamic atr trend indicator tsi radar screener and the signal line so the Radar 1.0, it's used to organize your watch list and it confirms trade progression. It shows four different chart times. It can be applied to multiple indicators and it allows you to see four plus time frame trend directions on one chart. And here's the Radar in action. So on the left hand side, you'll see when you have a Radar on your chart, there's a little spoke that comes up if you click on that radar area, and that's where you would go into to customize your time frames. And then on the lower right hand side, it says 60 minutes, four hours, one day, and one week. Those are um, just uh, simplifications, so it doesn't say the minutes, but that's what that 60, 240, 1D, and 1W stand for. So here's an example of when you click on that spoke and you can change the time frames so that you can closely monitor your charts if you want to do some intraday trading or if you want to change it to more of long-term time frames. But you would just click on the spoke and this little pop-up is going to come up and it's you click on the box on the right-hand side for three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. You just choose whatever time frame you want there. All right, so the next indicator we're going to go over is the trend indicator and it's used to set alerts. So the step one is the key will pop up to indicate these are, there's a great chance that an upward trend is coming. So stay alert and get ready. And then step two is the bell indicator pops up and this confirms the trend direction. This means the upward direction is strong and you may wanna take action. And step three, the numbers one through seven confirm the trend direction with these numerical numbers. One, the number one is the beginning of the first bar from which all buy conditions are met. Two to seven is the total number count of the present cycle. And if buy conditions criteria are still met, the number count will then restart from the bell. So here's an example of that. So this is a Bitcoin chart. Again, it's just for example purposes. Um, so you see that the key comes in, that's key opportunity, and then the bell comes in, and then you have one to seven. But take note that 
after four, you see a dollar sign, and after six, you see a money bag. So that's almost like a psychological um, reminder for everyone to take profit often. You know, especially with the market today, you you know, guys, what goes up comes down. It's like a bouncy ball when you were a kid and you got out of the $25 machine at the grocery store and you begged your parents, I need that ball. I have to have that ball. <laughs> well, remember after the grocery store, you took it to the parking lot and you bounced it and then it just ran over in their cars and you lost it. But when you bounce that ball, it goes up and it goes down. So just remember if number five and number seven, when you see that dollar sign, if things are still going up, you've got to really think about taking profit because we want you to make money. All right. So indicators, you have two, the volatility index shows overbought and oversold conditions. That's my favorite one to buy with. And it's used with shorter time frames. And then the signal line, it shows the trend direction confirmation when the green linear average crosses the red. And then the TSI, the trend strength indicator, it shows early trend reversal when the green plots start. And then so the little arrows and then it shows early exit reversal when the red arrows start. So green means it's growing. You got to think about when you're going to take profit. And when you see red, you should be thinking, hmm, what am I going to buy? So ERI, early reversal indicator. The green arrow up means the conditions for soon upward trend are present. And the red arrow down means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. So you got to think it. If you see a red arrow, you think, oh, what am I going to sell? If you see a green arrow, then you better hope you already bought. <laughs> okay, so here's the example of all of those. We have the early reversal indicator showing red arrow going down. So that means, ooh, what am I gonna sell? Um, then you have the trend direction and you're thinking, okay, I'm glad it's going green. Is the number gonna come up on this particular example? Because that means it's gonna still go up. Um, but it looks like in this particular chart, there was some turbulence and this was Bitcoin recently. It's not today, but it was recently. So there was turbulence for a while now, since April the 6th is when the turbulence in crypto started this season. So the TSI trend strength, it looks like it was going up and then, ah, oh, there was some turbulence. It looks like it's, it's, you know, you can see that golden line curving over and all signs above a, especially on this particular chart, the early reversal indicator here, the red arrow going down on the top, it's, you can see there's some resistance happening. Now the signal line in this example, it's tight. And when I say tight, the green is close to the gold. And typically when that happens, it could change the direction that the market's going in. And then on the volatility index, you can see that the volatility index line on the bottom is curving downward. So it's once you get acclimated to all of these indicators and they're all giving you different information, but when they're all in sync, like a harmony or like the your favorite song and you're just like, wow, you understand the tune and the tone and it's all going the same direction, then it is what it is, right? Quacks like a duck, swims like a duck, looks like a duck, it's a duck. So even as much as we don't want it to be if, if we got in too late. All right, so now here's Bitcoin. Um, not This is not so much about whatever uh, market we're looking at. I wanna show you about the volatility index on this one. So this is my favorite one, guys, because it's just like a house. You make money when you buy it, not necessarily when you sell it. So here's the deal. The volatility indicator measures how far the coin stretches away from its mean price. So Personally, I like to take profits when my volatility index is in the green. That's the overbought zone. So pull your eyes to the right-hand side, and you can see overbought, the number is 80, all the way to 100. So that is where you could, when you get into a market, you could set an alert saying, tell me when this gets to 80, because that's when you should be on alert, okay? You should really be watching it, because remember what the bouncy ball at the grocery store, what goes up comes down? So when it's in the green zone, you should be thinking, when am I going to take my profit? Now, the the center area is what Joe and I call it, let the cake bake. That's like this, uh, this is, it, it's cooking. You know, it's not ripe or ready. It, it's it, it's not oversold, but it's definitely not overbought yet, okay? So it's, it's, it's 
just baking, all right? Now, you if you're in profit, then take your profit. Now, below the red line, the thick red line, that's a number 20. That's a key number that I want you to just mental note. And the bottom thin line is a zero. So that's the really exciting, if you have like your, if you didn't buy pizza on Friday, right? And you got that extra $20, you're like, all right, I'm gonna get in. Then that's where you're gonna, you know, grab your pizza money or something, something that that it, you can risk, okay? Because this is crypto. But that's where you, you want to take a chance, or I do at least, um, to buy when it's really on the floor. And you can see on this particular chart that um, it doesn't stay on the floor very often and very, very long either. So the closer you get to zero, the better off you're going to be. And on those slides earlier for the current Bitcoin chart for one week, you saw I think Bitcoin was at a 13 volatility index right now, and Ethereum was at 16. So Bitcoin was lower than Ethereum. All right, so now we're going to use the mastery.cryptobrigade.com indicators now. So again, if you don't have them, you can subscribe to them at the URL above. Okay, so this is the fun part when we get to do Q&A and um, Joe gets to jump on and talk to us and we get to get questions from you guys. So I would love to hear, you know, what your thoughts are for the day or if you have any questions. I'm so glad everybody's here today. And we do have questions. Pirate J said, can you show the first slide again? Ah, um, missed it. Okay, I guess so. Here we go, first. That was okay. So you want to see this pirate Jay? I guess let me just play that. Do you want to just take a screenshot of it? it? You know what, guys? I do have all these in the Facebook group. So if you guys are part of the Crypto Mastery Facebook group, I did put this in there. It's just um Pirate Jay, it's basically just saying that um the creator of Ethereum is really thinking more towards simplifying Ethereum uh, and to make it more of a dominant currency opposed to a, I don't know, he doesn't really say that's an infrastructure, but I think Ethereum is great the way it is because it is such an infrastructure coin. It, I feel like it's it's important for that, but I hope that helps you. Okay, so. Oh, okay, so what I want you to do next is, is now let's apply the uh, chart overlays. So we want to put on there the uh, TSI, the uh, trend indicator, the ERI chart, and the volatility index. There you go. All the good stuff on there. <clears throat> so one of the reasons in particular that I chose this in there, and, oh, we got to put the um, the radar. Where's the radar? Um, all right. Let me add. Now, what okay, we want is this, uh, what? okay. I like the the short term radar too. So I have this yeah. preset with two radars. <laughs> yeah, but for right now, let's just look at one radar, right? So hide the first one and hide the APR. Okay. All right, because specifically, what I want I want to talk about is what we need to happen to win. And, and we're you looking at this market here as an example, and then we're going to take a look at the other markets. Um, and um, talk about setting alerts. So one of the things in particular, Susie, that I look for is, and that I use, is really that trend indicator, okay? And if you notice in there from the April, right when everything started to get, uh, the market started to go in its downtrend, you had the uh, color stop on the, T on the uh, trend indicator, and then you also got your first red flag on the TSI. So, you know, at that point in here, you know, you have to take profits. And if you noticed, you know, right above the trend indicator, you have the ERI, which is the vertical red line. So, you know, you have this cycle and the cycle is peaking out in April. And, and that's what the tools are showing you here. Now we start to come into uh, this downtrend, these down cycles. And, and every market's going to do it. Now, ideally is, is that we avoid, we avoid it. We're smart enough to get out 
up there with the tools. We have the tools and we, you know, uh, it's storming outside and we were able to shut the door just in time. But another case point, you know, like myself, because I'm not perfect, you know, I'm still in the market, right? So, you know, I, I may have not covered my positions right there. So now I'm looking for, well, when's the best time for me to re-enter into the market? The best time to re-enter is when the trend changes. And the clues that we start to see with the tools when the, this trend starts to change. So if you look in here, it's up until recently, Susie, the last couple of days, you can see in here how, and let's start with the volatility index, and this is on the bottom. Uh, it starts to come out of the red zone, which is the oversold. That's our first clue. Uh, second clue, we have the signal line, which is approaching with the cross. All right, then we have our third clue, which is the TSI. And everyone that's been following along in here, we know how special this is, that TSI, right? There's all kind of good stuff that happens, you know, when you hit the market right with the TSI. So, and then we come up into the trend. Now, if you look vertically, Susie, you might have to move the line over, but you'll notice the ERI. And that's, what, that's one of the things I wanted to point out. I think you got the vertical line there. You need to move it to the, uh, the left a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I want to show that, that green, vertical, red, uh, green vertical line, which is the ERI. Yeah, right here. This right. is what I'm trying to make more room for the thing. See it. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So, that's a that. Yeah, so so it's kind of like we start to see the market move out of this transitional zone, and then you know you you actually get to, to see these tools start to um, you know find these different conditions in the market, and then start to populate and then give these clues of show you different places of positioning. Because all these tools and everything is all mathematics. And one of the other things, if you notice, Susie, if you move that up a little bit, you can look at the radar. The daily and the weekly is green. Now, it's not going to always be like that. Nothing in this business is 100%. There's always going to be that 1%. And then there's a lot of times in there, like I have, I speak with people and they say, well, the radar changed color. Well, the radar is confirming your trade progression. It doesn't mean that, hey, when it turns green, it's 100%. You know, that you, you, we never know when the trade is going to be 100%. The best thing we can do is we get the tools, we get the clues, and we let the market come to us. And that trend indicator is a perfect example of letting the market come to you, waiting. And then now, like you can see the bell alert, and uh, I, I don't know if this market's going to turn around and follow through, but this is one of the only markets that I that I found right now. But I anticipate that as we start to get, you know, maybe put a base in in here in the crypto, we'll start to see the same clues start to show themselves, and um, we'll start to see that recovery that we, you know, that we all want, you know. Um, but uh, right now, this was the uh, the best one that I could find. So now, knowing what we know, Susie, let's go over here and take a look at the Bitcoin. Okay, same situation, right? But in this case point, we don't have that weekly green. You know, so this is one of them cases where is that, you know, you have to let the market come to you. So, you know, we're not ready with this right now. You know, but you can set your alerts. Now, the TSI might be going off because it's down there and oversold. But the, the trend indicator, you know, you can set your alert. And then when we get into that condition, and it might be another week or it may do it in a few days. I mean, like I'm not a bottom picker. You know, or, you know, I don't try to call tops. I just do setups. I just use the tools. And I try to go with the tools, um, the best setups that are the most easiest 
you know, because, you know, I, I want the path of least resistance. You know, I mean, that there's still 200 coins inside the, the coin base. Bitcoin is just one of those coins. Um, but right now, it's a time in here, a transitional time where the market's at, whereas is that a lot of these coins are all setting up. But, but overall, we're all waiting for the market to come to us. So if you notice in particular how that trend indicator is, Susie, how we started to like, you see how it gave like in the beginning of May, like one green bar and it was a key and then it turned back down again. Yeah, right there. It has yeah. resistance and turbulence. Right. Which we, what I, the early reversal came in and then the key came in, but then ugh, something happened. <laughs> Now, when I see that, right, that lets me know that that's a level of significance. Meaning is that, you know, when the market does turn, it really needs to get back above that 40 level. You know, because that's exactly where that took place at. You know. Right. So, yeah. great. Yeah, so, yeah. That's good to know. That's a golden nugget, Joe. So if we see some turbulence, we see some resist, like we see the indicator looks like, hey, it's going to go up and then there's some resistance, then that's somewhat of a, a potential target, next target for. Now, now, here's what's interesting, right? If you change this to the Ethereum, right? Knowing what we know, I mean, we know that it, it tried to, you know, go a little bit extra and failed. Notice how the Ethereum, the trend indicator never turned on. You know, yeah. and that's why I like the Ethereum better than the Bitcoin because the Ethereum, it kind of seems like it's a, maybe a little bit more smoother. You know, I mean, like slow and steady wins the race. I mean, the, the Bitcoin is always going to have that fast move. But for me, I like doing the pass of le least resistance. Like I'm looking for the setup. So this is something to me is a little bit more cleaner because the trend line never turned on. I mean, the trend indicator never turned on. So again, like this is another one that I'm waiting for. And I'm also have my alert set with the ERI because like, you know, the ERI is something in there that um, is, is very special too. Like that allows me to position myself in a way you know, earlier and also set the right expectation. But I kind of always look for, you know, the ERI to have that extra confirmation from the other tools. So if you notice that when the ERI triggered earlier this month, you see how the volatility index was like in between, right? And then now the volatility index is down at the yeah. oversold level. So to me, I always look at the volatility index, yeah. Yeah, because what that is, is that's like a rubber band and, and you're pulling back the rubber, rubber band to a certain point. So that's another edge. It's all about putting the odds in your favor. Yeah. So, you know, it's um, that's something in there that uh, we want to keep a look at. And, you know, one of the things is, is that uh, it's not just this market, because a lot of these markets are all moving together. Like if you change this to the uh, uh, the Selene. Solana, S-O-L. Oh yeah, Solana, yeah, sorry. Okay, same thing again with the trend indicator. So this is yeah. another one that sets your alert. And that's what's best about, you know, why we put together this assortment of chart overlays, because we believe, you know, this is really what you need to win. But in order to, to win, you need to know, right, how the program works, how to position yourself. You need to kind of see the before and after, and you need someone to take your hand. It's kind of like hiking. We can go hiking, right? But if you go hiking alone, what do we know? There's a good chance you're going to get lost in the mountain. So you need someone to hold your hand first. You know, and then you go hiking and you can really enjoy it. But if not, hiking can be a, a very challenging experience alone. So this right here is uh, another one where you want to have your alert set, Susie. And uh, when this turns up, 
this could be another potential opportunity. Yeah, and look at, so it's getting so tight here on the signal line, and then you already have the TSI in the one day. Yeah. Going up. We just need, we need seven solid days to trigger the, the wheat to move. Four, and then four, also, four out of seven days. Yeah. And then also, you'll also see it reflected in the radar. Sorry, I, I just wanted to just say that, is that, you know, yeah. You're not seeing any life inside of the radar right now. And and the whole purpose of the radar is, is is that it's letting you know that you could have potentially follow through from the bar. So, you know, the more green that you have, the better. So in this case point, we only have one out of four. But but there's going to come um uh, a period where when the market does rally and does recover. And then we're going to see the radar really, really in motion at work. Yeah. You know, I just want to give you guys a heads up. I love this ruler on the left-hand side here. You can click on it and then click from one spot and then drag it to another. And it'll tell you how many days were, was in this time frame. So this is 45 days. That's what the 45D means because this is the one day chart. And it went down 61%. So it's it's 61% off from the recent high up here. And so for all you bargain shoppers, you know, you just just know that I mean, this is um it's a wonderful place to be. Oh wow, look at this. If we just pull back, if if we get back to where those all-time highs were, and some some do, some don't but 78% down. And it's not like the, the overall market went down. Just, just to give you guys a perspective, I mean, if you're new into crypto, the overall market went down and the overall market will go back eventually. It, it just does. So we have, we have gotten back, and I'm trying to think back to 2018 when we had so many things go down. A lot of the things bounced back. Um, well, of course, and Bitcoin did. I mean, I remember it thought we all thought the world ended in 2018. And then what did we do? We not only got all the way back to where we were, but then doubled. So it's the motion so, in the you ocean. Know, uh, you know, Sue, just um, a couple more coins that I just wanted to talk about just before we run out of time. You know, and these are ones that we actually have on the list because, you know, you, these are coins, you know, you can set your alerts. Like if you go to the um, Atom, Let's see if I have it in here. So you can click on your list and so, and then there we go. Okay, and uh, this one here is all is down at the twenty, and you see the signal line. Now, wow. if you look at the trend indicator and you kind of make that bigger, one of the things in particular is, is that this thing has been off since April. Like, if you, yeah, make it a little bit tighter right there. So, you know. Um, the ERI tried to come in earlier, but you know there was a fail there. But the next ERI that we get, or if we get an ERI coming up, then this could be something that that could be, you know, set your alerts for this, you know, and this thing could be something that could turn very quickly as well. You mean like this ERI, or you mean you want a second ERI? Well, that ERI, which is the green one, right? That that's that considered a fail. Right. If, if you get one and the market doesn't follow through. OK. But if we get a, if we get another one coming up. Right. That's a clue. If you know, and then also if the signal line crosses, that's another clue because that's dangerously close. That was very close. So how you know? long do you wait for a second ERI? So how do you determine like, OK, well, that that opportunity, that ERI opportunity has passed. Do you wait a few days, or is it another indicator that would tell that that what you said failed? And hey guys, just to chime in, this is Brett again. I I love it on the weekly. The higher time frames are really highly accurate, and so um I actually have all this queued up here. If you want me to share my screen really quick, so I think it might be helpful because uh, the ERI is such a great indicator, especially on this weekly time frame. And if you don't mind, I'll just kind of do that yeah. real quick so basically in this uh, eri 
the early reversal indicator was kind of based on a prior indicator, and we started seeing certain patterns that kept repeating that were highly uh, accurate. So let me turn off the radar here. And uh, so in the Bitcoin chart on a weekly basis, it was highly accurate. It nailed not only the bottom in the summer in July on the weekly basis, but also to the day. So I'll flip it over to the day as well. And on the weekly basis, caught these uh, market highs here and here and uh, bottoming down in this range. So I'd be watching for a weekly ERI for a highly uh, for a tradable bottom and a more likely uh, bounce on this, as well as the TSI coming up. So the ERI, as it stands for, early reversal indicator, kind of give us an early signal. What we want to look for is the follow through on the TSI from an oversold zone going from red to green. And so just jumping over to a daily basis, and I'll shake off these other indicators. In, uh, in terms of that comment, um, in the middle, the ERA is very effective at the extremes. So if you just remember that. So what that means is in the middle, when things are chopping around, you might get false signals and you might be less likely. Where it's most accurate on the daily is when we get several several in a row. So over here in this range, when we had three in a row, so we just had three of these in a row, we'd make that green. The third one, that pattern is highly reliable. And again, it's easier to see on the weekly basis. And sorry, I have so many lines on here. These things tend to come back into play later. But um, again, at these extremes, it's most accurate. So when we ran up from the September, October lows all the way up to the high, it nailed it right to the day up top um, on this in November. And if we go back even farther, it's it, when it zoomed in, it may appear to be uh, a lot of noise. But again, we want to be looking for the extremes after an extended run. So from here, we went down from 41,000 all the way back up here to 68,000. That's where we'd want to be looking for a reversal, early reversal indicator on the daily and then confirming on the weekly so here as this started to pull back a bit i would give this bullish uh, bullish eri less weight because we really hadn't made an extended move yet and um, we did have a confirming bearish eri here but as joe was saying a confluence of different indicators so down in here at an extended move which is where i'd want to be watching for bullish eris so we got one here and here and here and then we did get a short-term relief rally we had one put one in here and we haven't seen any yet. So that's why you want to be very careful going long, even though we're kind of in this li uh, liquidation uh, or liquidity pocket, which was uh, back in the midsummer where accumulations was happening. So what that tells me is, uh, you know, we want to be watching for some uh, short term bounce possibly and maybe something more along the lines of this before going higher. Now, uh, it's, I think it's possible we do break down and go lower. But in terms of this, we want to be watching for these ERIs. It's also why, while some people are saying we've put in a bottom, I don't believe that. And, and I'd like to see a few of these ERIs on the daily basis for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is leading the market. So that's really all we need to be watching right now, maybe Ethereum. So watching for those multiple prints on the bullish ERI, because we're at the extension of a long trend down. And then uh, to uh, also sometimes I'll even use two day, three day just to remove some of the noise here. But I like the daily weekly the most. And the fact that we we haven't printed one here is a suspect for any kind of a, a meaningful uh, rally here. Let me just see if I can pull this down. And again, um, what I'm looking for is that, yeah, that top that weekly has been really effective on the bearish reversals up top. So we see that here and here. And then also on the uh, bullish side. So that's what uh, and we could possibly see one. We, we've been down for seven weeks here on Bitcoin. So if we see any kind of a rally going into the weekend and then we see a weekly bullish ERI, then we'd be more likely to see this pattern coming up to resistance and kind of coming around in here, possibly even pushing higher. So that's what we want to be watching for on the ERI and that, you know, the ones to ignore are the ones that are sort of mid range and not necessarily ignore them, but give them less weight. And then once the uh, other signals chime in, like the TSI and the uh, signal line, that's when they're most effective. And then certainly when that trend bell and uh, key and bell kick in. So anyway, I just uh, wanted to kind of clarify that and thought that might be useful because um, we spend a lot of time uh, kind of looking at this uh, during the week. 
So anyway, uh, back to you guys if you want to uh, take that. that well, we, are, we are out of time, but that was a perfect way to end. I love seeing the trio, and, and I definitely personally understand the power packed punch that those three combos will have. I mean, your charts just said it all. It was perfect. Like if you condense that back, I love it where you showed in September, I think 2021, where there's like three ERIs on a one day basis, went one, two, three, and then ding, it went right up to 60,000. I think that was yeah. great. Right there. Yeah. yeah I mean, right, there right there. Not to belabor it, but it's uh, the more in a row that we have, uh, and actually I don't need to circle it. I'd already had a green box around it. So you know, these are these zones. Uh, sorry, I have the wrong pointer on here. But uh, the when we have several daily ERIs in a row, the the more in confluence, the better. And up top we had sort of three bearish ones, so it was sort of a, a battle back and forth. And then uh, at the extremes, though, when we the after an upswing or an extended downtrend, you know, the single ERIs can be pivotal, like we we called it called the exact bottom. July 21st of 2021, after going around in the chop for a bit. But uh, so watching the daily and weekly ERI, very powerful, and then watching for that follow through on the uh, TSI. So back here we had the bearish ERI, early reversal indicator, TSI going from green to red, and then the signal line, I don't have queued up here, but that was the beginning of a very meaningful trend lower. So until we know the strength of the bounce, we have to play it safe and so but uh, certainly uh, we can do that trading these uh, eri signals which have been have been highly accurate uh, you know and um, especially on that weekly basis so and if you want to <laughs> wrap things up there i think that's a good place to uh, stop but let's you know if we do see that print guys we might see some some bounce action here in the short term um, not really sure on the longer term yet you so you can also go on the monthly basis but it's um there's not as much data uh, with the uh, ERI there, so that's uh, actually more more watching the uh, TSI, I think. So anyway, back to you. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thanks so much, guys. So with that being said, you guys have a great week with your trading and um, bring on your questions. And please go to the Facebook group. I've posted all the slides from today in the Facebook group, so you can access them there. And then we have a YouTube page also. It's crypto, is it Crypto Mastery, I believe, on YouTube. So the replays, you could always find there. And if you guys need to subscribe, then you can go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com. And I think I put the questions in, or the, the information in the questions box. All right. And Terry said, thanks. And Gilia said, eight week down. All right. Joe, do you want to say goodbye before we sign off? Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us. And good luck trading this week. All right. Take care. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. See you soon.